Yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm very yeah. excited to have this conversation because Dan and I have been talking in different social media platforms. Um, we were having a lot of really thought-provoking conversation and I was, um, I was finding it very, very interesting all that he had to say about his own journey as a feminist and as a man feminist and and we thought you know what let's record it and let's get people be part of this and see if we can all learn together so thanks very much man, for allowing me to record this and share this no problem Virginia I'm looking forward to it so um I feel like I know you know <laughs> even yeah. we all live yeah. so on the internet but for <laughs> Those of you that don't know you, um, just tell us a bit more about yourself. Yeah, so my name's Dan. Um, I'm a 38-year-old uh, new feminist. I've been a feminist now for about five or six months. Um, father of two daughters who are 11 and 8, respectively. Um, and yeah, it's um, I I've learned so much already, but I'm open to learning more. And it's been a really liberating experience for me. Um, and listening to women. Um, my journey into feminism came from just a life of making um, what I call misogynistic mistakes, both conscious and subconscious, and being accountable for that now. And getting over that hurdle was the most liberating thing, I think, of making that initial transition into feminism, of holding myself accountable, which a lot of men find very difficult to do, I've noticed. Oh yeah, I've noticed, I've noticed that too. But what is, uh, what is? I think I'm gonna actually go a little bit of the. We normally have this questionnaire that I do on writing. Sure. People, but I think I will love to have that more in a conversational talk. But what is feminist for you? What do you say? I like? think. I think when I when I came into it, um, it was it was very much about about you know my experience of, of, of dealing just primarily with relationships uh, romantic relationships with women but since I've I've come into I've realized how broad it is and how and how and how, how it welcomes everyone in and you know um all about that kind of um LGBTQ uh, rights um you know um race issues as well equity and equality across the board and um and you know, and, and even the fact that I think one of the one of the one of the key the key things for me, I suppose, one of my my anxieties about becoming a feminist was how would I be received as a man? Because I think that there's a very ignorant perception that it's man hating, and it's completely not that, and that's not been my experience at all. Um, but I think it's really about being a a good a good person who treats people equitably and with equality that essentially in a nutshell is it could be I could be a lot more broad than that but simplistically it's just about treating people with respect I think in a in a very sim in a very simplistic way I love that I love the definition I think I've never heard that one before but I like it um and what made you do you remember some like a moment or a series of events that because you two I imagine I did definitely thought that feminism was something different so at some point you know you learn or you discover okay well that's not what it is about do you remember what made you feel comfortable calling yourself a feminist I think that if I'll be completely honest with you obviously how we got in touch is I I I kind of, I remember I read an article, I can't remember the exact article, but I just read an article about feminists. I'd always found the idea challenging and I was probably anti-feminist for a number of years. Um, and I read an article and I was like, oh, that, this sounds interesting. This sounds like something cha is challenging, but I, I did, a, a little, I had some therapy on other things and I was like, I'm interested in this. So I read an article and then I actually went feminist, typed into Google feminist gifts for my daughters and I came across your shop um, and obviously I bought some things for my daughters and you were really fr friendly to me and I thought this is good and then it was just having those com initial conversations and I thought and I joined a few things online um, at a few groups on Facebook and it was more of a transition rather than a kind of like instant oh, I moment I, I think I, I knew I wanted to be a better man and I, I and I think I held myself accountable for some of my behaviour in previous relationships. So that for me was a big step of like, right, I've done that. Why have I done that? <laughs> um, you know, why is this important to me? And then it was, yeah, just reading. Obviously, I've read your book, which is great, um, and I've read some other books as well. And um, 
and yeah, I'm constantly learning. But yeah, but the, it was probably that, that initial transition of, right, I've held myself accountable. Now what am I going to do to extend that? And what is, um, how do you feel like it's been the reaction? Because I imagine, uh, and we've talked about this before, but I think it's very interesting. Mm. Like we live in a bubble. So at the moment, a lot of my bubble are pretty much feminist. <laughs> But it wasn't when I started and I remember having big arguments with people or my Facebook friends or, or friendly people that you will have in your personal Facebook and I will post something and I will get really, you know, bad comments and fight. I, I've realized actually that a lot of those people probably just block me, which fair play, <laughs> just mm. block me. Um, so you, you know, if you go to my personal Facebook now, it's it's pretty much feminist, but it wasn't. And, and it takes a while. I mean, it, it, you outgrow people or people get out of your yeah. life or you feel a lot of resistance because there's big changes in you. So how, as a man, I think it's even different. Like it's probably more intense, that process. So how have you? I think that one thing, and I know we've discussed this before as well, Virginia, but uh, for everybody else who would watch this was that, I expected some negativity because obviously misogyny exists quite quite predominantly across a, a spectrum of social media. But I was I was surprised at how um, like vitriolic it was. I've lost friends who they, they just said they won't talk to me anymore. Um, so that initial kind of first month when I started promoting feminism on my platforms, um, you, you mean yeah, I got lots of negative negative view, but from within the feminist community it's been very welcoming like you know as a man I was a bit conscious like can you know there's you see articles can men be feminists or should we even identify as feminists should we be feminist allies should we be this I mean I think that's a decision to take for yourself as well I do identify as a feminist and that's been positively received but I think that what I've got from people is that there's a complete misunderstanding of what feminism is there's a lack of not just from men, but from a lot of women as well, that who are my, who are my female friends, because I was really surprised about. And even now, even some family members, there's very much a culture of almost like it's a fad, like, or, or there's an eye roll, or like, even the people who I suppose aren't object, uh, objecting to it, there's still a kind of like, maybe a sort of, I don't really want to get too involved with this. Um, and then the people who do want to be feminists very much want to be involved. And I, I, I think one thing that I, I'd like to try and promote is to try, and, and I've been working this about having conversations to, to bridge that divide between people who are feminists. Um, perhaps the people who are totally on the other side is going to be very difficult change, but those ones who are in the middle who kind of like, well, if I'm aligned with that, are people going to judge me? Because I think a lot of what I get is like a fear of like, well, I kind of agree with the values, but I wouldn't say I'm a feminist as a man because people will think x y and z about me when the only people who really think that are people who the whole reason we're feminists for people are misogynists I mm. think. <laughs> I, it's also um, i mean we've experienced that the other day like i got a troll in social media and then yes. he was like very or whatever i mean i don't really mind and then you he got involved in the conversation and the tone with you was different as in and I think I get asked a lot, like what men can do for feminists and things. And I think there's so much for you. There's so much work for you to do. I'm so glad you all came here to work. Um, and I think it's the conversations with other men. I think there is a, a big part of men needs to be having those conversations with other men, because the truth is that A, there's a lot of emotional labor in those conversations that we are exhausted to have. Like, I don't, I don't have time or I don't have the capacity and sometimes I really want to have them and sometimes I really don't but also sadly they don't listen the same way like if I say something it doesn't come across the same way but also there's a reality and a factor of lived experience as in I haven't lived what you have lived and I can speak about my experience all day long but there is also value in listening of okay your own journey what got you there uh, because again, the common enemy is not the man, it's patriarchy, and, and patriarchy also shape you the same way that they shape me and shapes everybody else. 
So I think those are the conversations. And I know you're going to do something about it. I mean, I know you were saying that you would like to maybe start a blog or maybe a YouTube channel or a podcast. So what would you want to get out of it? Or what is... I, I, think, I think... So I think blogging is something definitely I want to start doing and potentially a YouTube channel at a later date if, that, if the blog gains traction. I think in terms of having the conversations with men, one thing that... And I think this is important. There's something I often say to say to them is that like, I used to, I, I wasn't conscious of these things either. It's only since I've big, become a feminist, really, that and I because you have to be. I think as a man, women live misogyny. That they they suffer from patriarchy and misogyny. Men, you have to be conscious of it to to understand. And if you're not conscious of it, it's very easy to be a net by proxy. You're subconscious of it, and you're not aware of it. And I think that it was only when I became a feminist that the objectification of women, oh, you've seen, have you seen this woman on the phone? Have you seen this? And it's very casually enabled. And the, the, it doesn't mean you're a, a terrible man. It's just patriarchy that, that teaches you these things are acceptable. And, and, and I think because uh, as men, we don't, so we don't see the consequence of that in behavior when you're in the bar or whatever, or, e or even the fact that I've picked up on how men kind of just approach women as if like it's chivalrous like and you know you never think as a man you don't think oh when you're going out a worry is oh if we go to that bar we're gonna have loads of women come up to us you know we're gonna have loads of people come up and just you know interrupt our night you know you don't think about those things because they're not things that happen culturally as much so I think that they're the conversations that I try and have with men just imagine this just imagine that these things that we've never had to think about but imagine that'd be a bit stressful, wouldn't it? And then it would get annoying. And then it become like, oh, really annoying. And then it would become <laughs> intense. And they're, they're, that's how I try and approach the conversation. So I, I think that it's really important to, to engage people, to like not tell them what to do, but to try and get them to think about ideas. Okay. And I have had a couple of friends who, are, who have been open to that. And, and it actually, only, the conversation came around because of a, behavior of like showing a picture of a woman who he found attractive who was a movie star or something and I before I would have just think goes well yeah okay um but that since I've become a feminist that kind of triggered me to go then oh, I have the conversation I was like oh you know something you know it's not really a great thing to do you've got a daughter how would you feel if like a couple of guys in the bar were doing that and and personalizing it to their own situation or women they care about I think not always but can start to have that conversation of going oh Ooh, how would that affect me because because that, that's really the only way I think for men because of the patriarchy to address those things is to perhaps personalize it through women they care about and how they would feel if those women were treated in that way because you can't as a man <laughs> necessarily and I think that's really interesting because um one of the things that hardcore feminists and I'm going to include myself there fight for is that it doesn't have you know like but it, I mean, it's true. I mean, and I think it's a journey. And I think eventually people will be like, oh, it doesn't have to be anyone that I care for her to be a human. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that we still associate women as a value attached to me, as in, if this happened to my daughter, then in a way it will happen to me. So um, I think there is a longer process in which eventually it's like, it doesn't have to happen to use or to her or you know like there's this big picture that I love in demonstrations that is like she is somebody's daughter somebody's wife yes. I think and then they're all and she's like she's somebody and it's like we still strongly associate women to she's somebody's daughter ergo you will be mm -hmm. indirectly harming a man which you can respect we were talking the other day a friend of mine and I um about the whenever you used to say to a man that is bothering you in the bar, sorry, I have a boyfriend, because they would rather respect an imaginary man that they don't know rather than you. It's like, if I say no, that's not enough for you to back off. But out of respect to this person that you don't know, <laughs> it's not even existent, that, that is a respect that you can have. That is a connection that you're like, oh, yeah, well, that's fine. And same with like, oh, my... And again, I'm not saying this, I think it's valuable, I think it's important and I think it's powerful to make those connections because if you I think make a connection out of the blue, it's so far, it's like, I don't mm -hmm. care. 
But I think if you bring that home, then the penny drops and you're like, okay, it's right. And then once you're there, it's much easier to yeah. keep having the conversation. And I think a big problem, it's not a problem. I think one of the things with feminists is that, um, and I try, and I know I'm probably guilty of this, is that once you know and you care, you just want people to go there with you. <laughs> I want you to be here with me. You know, it's like, yeah, but you weren't there either. You know, you needed the journey. And I think having those conversations in which, you know, you give to people what they're happy to receive or whatever they need to be talking about without getting a scare of what you really want them to be doing. Absolutely. Respecting that journey. And as you say, from a place of like, I'm not telling you what to do. I just want you to have the conversation and make you think about something that you maybe hadn't thought before. Yeah, I mean, I think, and again, like exactly just to emphasize that, it's more of a starting point. Like, I feel that, you know, um, when, I mean, I, I used to work for the police a number of years ago and we had training how to interact with people. And, and it was, I, you, some of that's helped in my personal life in about how to, um, to engage people, they if you're telling people what to do, they kind of switch off, I think, and then they're not retaining it. Having active conversations where it's go and flow. And personalise, it's more of a starting point for me. It's like the conversation's so difficult to have for a lot of men that you have to, to even enter it, it has to be personalised because it's so ingrained in patriarchy and culture to just these things are acceptable that unless you personalise it, it's like, it's like I often say it's like, like having a brick wall around like emotion <laughs> and it's like there's a few entry doors that are like the best so if you can get in then maybe then we can start having the conversation more broadly but it's not only it's not only i think with patrick well in this case but like it, it seems with racism and things like that like i feel like as a white person probably it took me a while to get and still a journey still a lot to learn but i think you know, they need us to be in a place. And a lot of people is like, this is so alien to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you know, so I just think it's very sad. And I think that the way it works is that it has to be a chain. So, you know, the roles mm. of some are moving forward things up here. The, the roles of others are just keep bringing people out. And as long as we're all moving forward, um, I think there's progress. And I think we need to celebrate those things as well. But um uh, but yeah, I think it's sometimes if you are in the winning part of the privilege change and somebody tells you something that you can't resonate with, is like, I don't, you're making this up. This yeah. is not happening. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you know, we're not, we're not teach to empathize with realities that are alien to us. Like, I don't, I mean, the amount of times that men have told me, like, I don't see that women are treated worse. It's like, ergo if you a man are not experiencing <laughs> that it must not be true then because yeah. of course you would know you would know better than me and it's not even out of bad intentions like they generally is like if women were treated worse I would know how would you know if you're not even willing like the fact that you're not even willing to listen to me when I'm telling you that we are it's a big indicative that we are but um but yeah, so that's why I mean, like, there's there's a lot of resistance. So whatever whatever takes to you know start breaking those breaks, it's welcome. And I think again, that's that's when men are so important. Like the, yeah. the capacity that you have to get into those spaces is huge. I think concession of privilege is a big obstacle for men because it's linked to masculinity a lot. Um, and I think a lot of these things are subconscious, which makes it so difficult because you have to start being conscious of them. So you have to move that around. We have that requires a little bit of effort, which is a, a, a lot of the time too much for a lot of men, is to do that and listening as well. I think that, you know, and, and I think that um, envelops in lots of these other issues, even with race and things like the Black Lives Matter movement and things like this, and why people aren't willing to listen to things they don't understand or concede that somebody might know something better than you, which is ridiculous, really, especially if you haven't experienced, like, if you're a woman or a person of colour, um, you know, the, the you know, we haven't experienced that. But I think that that's where a lot of, and I do think misogyny is a root of even all of these issues, because it, it comes back to, we're not taught as men, or certainly in my experience, to, we're taught to lead rather than, rather than listen. And then that, that naturally then, 
sort of goes it goes into all of these issues and it's and for me that was one thing that I've had to you have to be conscious of it the things that are inbuilt and learned if you're not conscious of them um, they're just going to stay there and, and my, my thing was really listening I struggled with that I'd always want to jump in and I'm still aware that I've still got work to do on that now and I like talking a lot um, but I'm aware of it and that's a good start but even and you were saying that like we're teach men are teach to lead yeah it's like men are we protect you you know men are protecting you from what are you protecting us <laughs> from other men <laughs> you are you know that's the part that we really need to fix we don't want you to protect us we want you to stop in the problem or the save us like that that need of like i want to save you it's like i just really don't <laughs> we don't want to be saved i know we've been told and and a lot of women we are also, you know, shaped and told that that's what we want. But it's like, mm -hmm. say from what? Again, is that is that question of say from what? And and I'm, we've talked about it before. Like, there's so much in feminist for men as well. As in, they're not winning either. I mean, they're winning women in this no. game, but it's not like they're winning anything amazing. The fact that they have privilege doesn't mean that men have it all easy or Patrick is playing a nice game with them either. I think they're missing out in a lot of things. What do you no, think? Absolutely. In, so what do you think is like your biggest, the biggest gift that feminists have given you? Like, I feel like that's... Well, I'd say it's improved my mental health massively. Like in terms of, I feel more empowered through, it sounds bizarre, through vulnerability. Like I feel more empowered through through the, the what you said about like... Um, and I know we talked about this before, about this protection thing. And I was into that as well. And, and lots of men are. But and this idea that you have to be a breadwinner or you have to do this, those things are completely unhealthy. And I think that now taking away that stress as a man of like, you know, I, I, you know, feminism is about freedom to be who you want to be, whether you're a man, woman, whether you're a trans person, whatever you identify as, it's freedom to be whoever you want to be. And having that removed is a sense of freeing, really. Yes, you do get people who are ne with negative comments. You do get people who are still stuck in, stuck in the stereotypes. But for me, I feel a lot more relaxed, like, you know, as a father, as a person. And I think that's, that's great. You know, there's a lot of stress in life. So, yeah, obviously, I'm still yeah, stressed at times. But I to feel more relaxed and, and more authentic as a person. And I think that you just, to me, being a feminist, just, you're, you're a good person. You're, you treat people with equally. You treat people with equity. You treat people respectfully. It's not... Like, why would, why would you not want to be that sort of person? Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, I love the, the thing of the manhood because it is true, it does feel exhausting having to defend constantly your masculinity at any yeah. cost, you know, like that. I, can't, I have to be perceived as this idea of what a good man is or what a brave man is and just giving yourself permission to, you know, be authentic and be like, look, that being empowered through vulnerability is so important and and that happened at a much much le higher level to men men are not welcome to be vulnerable there it is still very much associated with weakness and and that that would be I think yeah the, the biggest thing I want to give to my son is that understanding of like there is power in vulnerability in being authentic yeah. don't stress defending a version of yourself that doesn't represent you yeah and, I, and a lot of these things and I think if you if you just think about it um, on a very kind of even peripheral level so many of our stereotypes or ideas are just ridiculous like I, I, I obviously work with young children my background's early years and children are just authentic and honest they're not born prejudicial that, that, that's a taught thing and you know that they are, are my, even my daughter sometimes has been perplexed at like the ideas of like well how can grown-ups be that ridiculous because they don't understand it like I, I was thinking um about you know the, the ideas even around how sexuality is linked to like if you know you know that, that seems like a big thing and there's like a fear of somebody's gay or why why is that a fear that's who they are that they're, they're a normal functioning human being they just that's that that's that's, that's that their potential sexual preference that has nothing to do with anything else about their life but i think that's a fear like with men that oh if you're vulnerable you're gay but gay's not a bad thing even if even, even that's yeah, even if you wear you are gay so yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's one thing that needs to be challenged that that to start with but also um 
because that's a, a fear still because of the prejudice, prejudice around around sexuality. But then also the thing about weakness as well. Um, but it's so ridiculous. I mean, you know, people go one of the things and if we have I've mentioned this before, but it's something that I always think is a really good analogy to use is when people go to the physical gym, that's actively promoted all over Instagram gains. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But therapy, which is just gym for the mind. Oh, we can't talk about that. So yeah. one thing's completely celebrated, almost to a toxic degree, where it kind of can almost be body shame. But the other form of um, positive, you know, a, a, a positive gym, which is therapy, is still not. It's almost seen as a weakness, but it's not. Your 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 brain's part of your body. Yeah, like your, your, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's a healthy thing to do. And I think all of these things is so complex, and it, in the sense of there are so many prejudices across the board that affect it, but all of them are ridiculous. Like, I know that sounds probably pretty, but then yeah. you think about them on a very, very basic level, probably read a couple of articles or a couple of peer review, you, you'll be, it'll be exposed. And that's all you've got to do is just on all of these really crazy things, the idea of being gay, the idea of therapy being bad, that they're fundamentally based on, on ridiculous things. I, I, I had a child once mention to me, um, we was talking about in an age appropriate way, this was with a four year old about racism. And they couldn't comprehend how a grown up could do could could judge somebody like that because a four a four year old can humble racism of, as how ridiculous it is. Yeah. I mean, to, to, to me, to me, that's that 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 kind of says it all about all of these things that adult constructs that outdated. Um, and I, I I do feel positive though that, that these things are changing. I do I do really feel positive. I think the generation of twenty early twenty somethings now are a lot more reflective. Even in media and movies, there's a lot more representation of, of, of different groups. Um, and it's still early stages, but I think that normalising because it is normal, <laughs> so, you know, normalising this um, is 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 positive, and it might take a generation to fully changed but I am hopeful. I think it would take more than one but I think yes. as long as yeah I, I agree with you and, and and it's been hard weeks for feminists <laughs> we've not been the best yeah. weeks but I think overall we're making progress and I think yeah I think I'm hopeful I am I generally am hopeful I think we're having better conversations I think sometimes we get a reminder that it's like one step to a step forward one step back but uh, as long as, you know, we're determined to keep moving forward, I think, you know, there's all we can do. So I, I'm going to finish with one question of action. Sure. So, um, and then once you have, obviously, your blog and thing, I would love to promote it. And I would like to send men your way, mostly. But <laughs> uh, well, what would you... If you had somebody, one thing to ask anybody who is watching this, hopefully mostly men, um, what would you tell them to do? What is the one thing that be like, okay, please do this one thing and it will make a difference? I would say if you're in a relationship, listen to your partner, listen, listen to the women in your life and, and, and also be open to challenge, to challenge and information if it doesn't challenge you it's pointless like you're not going to change anything so it does you know I had a lot of these difficulties as well I, I struggled a lot and I still do I still find things challenging but it doesn't mean you're a bad person to have the vulnerability to reflect on it it means you're a good person so lit but listening listening is really really important and active but by I mean, I mean active listening I don't just mean passive listening I mean listening and taking on taking on board things that just because you don't understand them they're important to the to the people in your life for the women in your life that's very good no that's true and I think that's a job that we all have to do especially in the areas in which we're more privileged just learning to sit with the uncomfort be challenged shut up and just <laughs> question why am I uncomfortable and and you know what I love what you said and I think that's good a good reminder oh, and to me too that that it might be that you're not a bad person I think like that you might be a good person for trying so give yourself some sure. credit for that and buy virginia's book as well oh yeah that's a very good <laughs> that's, advice that, that, that's a great, a very great advice. advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well thanks very much um i'm gonna share this uh and obviously hopefully we get some talks and if it's gonna be in youtube so i bet we'll get some trolls too so um feel free to challenge us because we'll be free to challenge you back and that's Absolutely. what it's all about 
So yeah, have open conversations. Thank you very much, Julia. Take care. Cheers.